Good morning. Let's stand and join together in singing It Came Upon the Midnight Clear, hymn number 218. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we are glad to have you in worship this morning as we gather on this second Sunday of Advent. We'd like to welcome you to our service of worship here at Grace United Methodist Church. We do want to know who you are. If you are worshiping with us in person, we'd invite you to please complete the tear off section of your bulletin and drop it in the offering plate so that we can know who is worshiping with us today especially if you have a prayer request or some other need, that's a good way to keep in contact with us. So please take a few moments and do that. If you are worshiping with us online, we'd love for you to leave us a comment, maybe share our worship service on your page so that others can worship with you today. While you are doing those things, there are a few announcements that I would like to draw your attention to. First, we do have some new invite cards that look like this that have comfort and joy on them, much like the sign on the highway. So we'd love for you to pick some of those up and to take them home with you and to give them out to your friends and family to invite them to some of our upcoming special services like the Christmas cantata that is coming on the 18th, our candlelight communion Christmas Eve service, which will be at five o'clock on Christmas Eve, as well as some of the special services for Christmas Day and New Year's Day, which will be held at 10, 10 a.m. on Christmas Day and New Year's Day. So um, mark your calendars for those things. We also, um, you're also invited to the Living Word Christmas Party this Friday, December 9th at 6 o'clock in the living room. So I know that's going to be a good time. I know they'd love to see you at Sunday school or for the party if you'd like to be a part of that. Also this week, the Friendship Club is at 10 so fellowship uh, meal um, begins at noon. So we'd invite you to come and play games and visit from 10 to noon. And then we'll eat together at noon on Tuesday. So join us for that. Also on Tuesday, the SPR committee will meet at 6 o'clock in room 105. Let's see. Um, inside of your bulletin, you will find an insert where you can reserve poinsettias for the 
in honor or in memory of someone. So we'd invite for you, invite you to, to, to complete that and to drop it in the offering plate or bring it by the office, whatever you'd like to do. The poinsettias will be here for the 18th. So that gives you a couple of weeks this week and next week to get that completed. Also, um, on the 18th, we already mentioned the Christmas cantata. The Parsonage Open House will also be on the 18th from 2 to 4. So mark that on your calendar as we are getting ready for that. And come by and visit with us and enjoy some refreshments. And we'd love to see you for that. Also today, we are receiving Holy Communion. We will be inviting you to the altar to receive um, the bread and the, uh, and the juice. There are also some pre-packaged sets. If you would prefer not to come to the altar, I know that um, we still have COVID in the area. The flu is still around. So, um, so we, if, if you would prefer to remain in your seat and receive that way, there are some pre-packaged sets for you um, back by the um, sound booth. Of course, we want to say a very special congratulations to the Rustin Bearcats as they won their game on Friday. And uh, we'll be going to the Dome. Uh, I saw that all Lincoln Parish schools are canceled on Friday, so um, I know that students and teachers rejoice in that good news. So, um, so and that's, there's a lot going on in our church and in our community. Are there other announcements that we need to mention today? Okay. I'd like to invite you then to turn in your bulletin as the Barnetts come to light the Advent candle for us today. morning. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. On this day, we light the angel's candle to remind ourselves of Christ's divinity and the blessing he brings to us. This candle's purple color emphasizes Jesus' royalty. Our Messiah is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God sent his angels four different times to prepare people for Jesus' arrival. In Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 25, the angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah the priest to tell him that he would have a son, John the Baptist, whom God would use to prepare people for Jesus' coming. Later, Gabriel came to Mary in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, to prepare her to become Jesus' mother. Shortly thereafter, Joseph received a visit from an angel who told him about Mary's miraculous pregnancy. This was in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. On the night Jesus was born, a whole company of angels announced his birth to a stunned group of shepherds, told us in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. Angels are God's messengers. In the Christmas story, they are sent to prepare people for the birth of Jesus or to announce his arrival. We are no angels, but it's still our task to prepare ourselves and others for the coming of Jesus. It is still our task to announce that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, is born on Christmas. Join me now in the prayer that's printed in the bulletin. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your angels to prepare Mary and Joseph and others for Jesus' arrival. Thank you for preserving a record of their messages to help prepare our hearts during this Advent season. As Christmas approaches, please enable us to focus on the gift you gave us. Use us, Father, to point others to that gift, through your Son and our Savior, Jesus. Amen.
Thank you all. Hope you all have a great, great Christmas season. I guess the lesson is always have a backup. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> the backup might have played better than the starter, but no, oh well. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much and uh, for leading us in that. And now as our ushers come to receive our offering this morning, would you pray with me as we remember all the many blessings that God has given us? Oh, Lord, we are grateful for the day that you've given us, for the blessing of gathering in your house, the blessing of friends and family, the blessing of this season and, and all the things that are going on in our community as well as in our church. And so, Lord, we ask that you would help us in the midst of all of these blessings to most of all keep our eyes fixed on Jesus the Savior of the world, sent to us on Christmas night so long ago. And so, Lord, as we remember all your many blessings, we are so grateful. And now as we give you back a portion of what you've given us, we ask your blessing on these gifts that we give so that others might also know the good news of Jesus Christ. And it's these things we ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. As you remain standing, let's join together in singing Hark the Herald Angels Sing, hymn number 240.
Amen. Please be seated. Of course, that is a good Charles Wesley hymn, that Charles was the brother of John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, and Charles wrote thousands of hymns and poems over his lifetime, and we still have some of them in our hymnal to this day. So the Methodist movement is a singing movement, and so we're glad to be still singing some of Charles Wesley's hymns um, to the present day. As we come to a time of prayer in our service, the, uh, I want to remind you of the prayer request list that is on the back of your bulletin. I would like to encourage you to take that home with you and continue to pray for these folks um, throughout the week. I do want to um, update you on a couple of folks. Um, we want to continue to pray for Jean Lynch as she um, has been um, under the weather this week. We have had um, several that have had flu or flu-like symptoms, so we certainly want to continue to pray for them as well as for so many in our community that are dealing with all kinds of different illnesses. If the, the weather would decide if it's going to be whole, hot, or, hot or cold, it would probably help, but I think that's the way it's going to go this time of year. So, so we want to continue to pray for all those that are fighting illnesses. Also, um, as some of you may know, that um, the, the big island of Hawaii the volcanoes have started to flow once again in Volcanoes National Park. Jana and I were just there this summer and um, we're in those same areas where the volcanoes are, uh, are now flowing. So we want to pray for our friends out in Hawaii. Fortunately, I saw in the news this morning that it appears to be slowing. And so, um, so that's good news for them and we want to continue to pray for them. So that's some of the things that are on my mind this morning. We want to continue to pray for peace in our world. We want to continue to pray for our community um, as well. Are there others that you'd like to mention this morning that you know of who are in need of our thoughts and prayers? Yes, ma'am. For Ruby Dredden. Yes, ma'am. For Lynn, Glenn Walker. Yes, sir. For Corey Thompson. For Judy, okay. For Lynn, Linda Tootin, okay. Yes, sir. For Sheila Long. Others this morning. The family of Dot Bryan. Okay. We have a lot of needs this morning, and a lot of needs all around us. It's our task to bring the good news to them, as you will hear in a few minutes. All right, with all of those folks on our thoughts and minds, let us go to God in prayer. Oh Lord, we are so grateful that we can gather in your house and we are so grateful for your messengers that have brought us the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news that the Son of, the, of God, the Savior of the world is born. And Lord, we are grateful for your angels, your messengers, your helpers each and every day that lead us and guide us. Lord, we pray that we would not wait for an angel, but that we would be your messengers, your helpers to spread the good news of the birth of Jesus Christ wherever we go. And so, Lord, we, we pray that as we hear Gabriel's story, that his story will be our story and that we will be your messengers wherever we go. Lord, we do pray for so many needs that are we have mentioned and others that are on our hearts. We know that there are some that are sick and we continue to pray for them, for your healing touch to be upon them. Maybe it's a serious illness or maybe it's just the flu, but Lord, whatever it is that you know their needs and we pray for your presence to be with them in that difficult time. Lord, we also are mindful for so many folks who have a very different holiday season that have an empty spot around their table and we Continue to pray for all those families who have lost a loved one to death, and especially in this holiday season, it can be very difficult, and so we remember them this morning. Lord, we also know that there are other needs and other things that are on our hearts this morning. Maybe it has to do with family or friends. Maybe it has to do with something at work or at school. But Lord, whatever it is, what we know is that you love us, that you care for us, and that you hear us when we pray. And so, Lord, we are so grateful for your presence with us, and we ask that you would lead us and guide us. 
that your Holy Spirit would come into this worship service and that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. And it's all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Wait, I got to read first. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, we're out of our usual order. So, um, as you know, beginning last week, we began a series that I'm calling The Cast of Christmas. And so I'm going to read the scripture. You're going to see me walk off the stage. Don't worry if all goes according to plan. I'll be back shortly. If not, I've run away and hid. So just proceed without me. But um, so today we are going to hear from an angel named Gabriel. And we have two passages of scripture beginning in the book of Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 25 and then Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 38. And so I invite you to hear the word of the Lord this morning. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the, to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. <clears throat> but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Now in Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Don't you know that God is still on the throne? Don't you know that God is still working even though the world seems so crazy? But I guess maybe it is a little easier for me to see God working from my side of heaven and maybe a little bit more difficult for you. And there's certainly no reason to be afraid of me. I am simply an angel, a messenger. That is what the word angel means. Oh, I know I might look a little bit different from you in this white robe and my wings, but I am simply an angel, a messenger, a helper of the Most High God, and it is a great privilege to be a part of what God is doing. Heaven has been a rather busy place recently. Now, heaven is always busy when you have a, a boss that is always working around the clock each day, every day. It is always a busy place, but it seems like it has been especially busy lately. But we wondered as we watched all the preparations that God was making, we wondered, could this be the time? Could this be the time when the Messiah would finally come? But we wondered, why would it be this time? God's people have been conquered by a foreign superpower. Their freedoms have been limited. Many of them had even forgotten about God, that, that they weren't coming to the temple, they weren't praying as they should, they weren't doing the things that they should. The people were discouraged. They thought that God had forgotten about them. But you see, God has a way of making light from darkness. God has a way of bringing good things from bad things, and, and God even has a way of making light out of things that were dead. Because that is what the people of God were. That they thought that God had forgotten them and left them for dead. Finally, God was ready. And he called me before his throne room one day and said, Gabriel, I have a message for you to deliver. I thought, Yes, finally I get to, to, to deliver a message. And he said, I want you to go see a fellow named Zachariah. You will find him in the holy place at the temple. Deliver this message right now because he is sick. So I picked up the message and I went to the holy place in the temple. And indeed, Zachariah was there and I gave him the message that he would have a son even in his old age. You would think he would be thrilled, but Zechariah was. And he asked instead for a sign. Instead of being excited, he said, how can I know that this is going to be true? Uh, be careful what you ask for. If you ask for a sign, you might just get it. And so Zechariah got his sign, and he would, could not speak until the child was born. But I, someone told me he heard from that fellow last week. So after talking with Zechariah, I went back to the temple and I resumed my duties, serving and helping God. Again, God summoned me to his throne room and said, Gabriel, I have a, another message for you to deliver. This time you are to see a young woman named Mary who lives in a small town in Israel named Nazareth. You are to tell her that she will bear the Son of the Most High God. Oh, I was so excited that finally, finally, that all the years, all this time that we have waited for, that Jesus, the Messiah, would be born. You see, from the very beginning, when God created humanity way back in the garden, and Adam and Eve chose their way instead of God's way. And this thing called sin entered the world. God has been working to redeem his people. God has always been working to redeem his people. And finally, this was to come to pass. But I wondered how he would receive me. And 
so I went to Mary and I, I showed up at her place in Nazareth and I said, greetings, Jews who are highly favored. And I could see the surprise on her face. She said, don't be afraid. You'll hear that line more than once. Don't be afraid. I have good news. You are to bear the son of most high God. You will name him Jesus. Again, she has questions. What is it with you humans and all of your questions? Don't you know that God is still in charge? Don't you know that God is still working to redeem his people? And she said, how can this be? For I am a virgin. I said, well, what is within you will be from the Holy Spirit and Remember that nothing is impossible with God. She said, let it be unto me as you have said. I am the servant of the Lord. Such faith, such trust in one so young. You would think it would have been the priest, but instead it was this young woman from Nazareth who showed such great faith. Well, I returned to heaven, and again, I got an emergency message from God. This time, God wanted me to go to Mary's fiancé, Joseph, and I appeared to him in a dream, because Joseph, being the righteous man that he was, had decided that Mary was unfaithful to him, and had decided to divorce her quietly, for that was what the law had said that so I had to appear to Joseph and say, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is in her is of the Holy Spirit. That she will bear a son, and that son will be the son of the Most High God, and you shall name him Jesus. Jesus, Yeshua, God's salvation, for that is what he was to be. Again, we returned to heaven, and, and this time he knew that the hour was approaching, that the day was coming when the Messiah would be born, and the Son of God would be born on the earth. It was as if all of us were on the edge of our seats, that we were looking over the, the balcony of heaven into the earth below to see what was going to happen. Finally, God gathered all of the angels together. It was the biggest assembly of angels that I had ever seen in my entire life. And he said, this is the time when my son is to be born. And you are going to help me spread the good news. He said, you are going to appear to shepherds in the fields and to tell them that Jesus has been born and, and how to find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger in David's town in Bethlehem. He said, well, I'm going to need one angel to speak to the shepherds, and then the rest will form this huge angel choir. So, of course, I was chosen to speak to the shepherds since I had experience speaking to you crazy humans. And so I, when Jesus was born, I appeared to the shepherds and I said, Jesus, do not be afraid. I have good news for you. The Son of God, the Messiah has been born in David's town. You will find him in Bethlehem, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. When I had finished speaking, the entire host of angels showed and, and they lit up the sky. It was night, but it was as bright as day. And after we left, the shepherds headed out to find the newborn Messiah in Bethlehem. Why shepherds, you ask? I mean, of all the people that, that God could have chosen to, to tell the good news about the Messiah, why shepherds? Well, you might remember that some of the early leaders of God's people were shepherds. Pe people like Abraham and Moses 
in David. They were shepherds. And shepherds spent a lot of time out in God's creation, that, that beautiful land, that beautiful place that God had provided for them. And they often spent time praying and reading the scriptures. And shepherds had an important job. The shepherds cared for the sheep. Sheep are really the People can sometimes be like sheep. But it was an important job because the sheep that they were raising, some of those very sheep were to be sacrificed in the temple on behalf of the people for remission of sin. So they had a very important job. Finally, when the shepherds got there, we rejoiced with them. We were so grateful for what God had done. And we watched as the baby grew. We watched as the Magi came from the east to worship this newborn king. We watched as the jealousy and rage of an evil king grew. Finally, we got, I mean, one night I got an emergency message from God that I needed to go back to Joseph and appear to him in a dream to tell him to get up, hurry, the king is after you, gather your things and leave and go to Egypt and stay there until I tell you to return. Well, Joseph did exactly as I told him. He, he got his little family up quickly, that they gathered a few things and they left with haste. And it's a good thing they did, for that evil king killed many of the babies in that region just a few hours later. So they stayed in Egypt for a few years, and the evil king finally died. I appeared to Joseph again in a dream to tell him that it was safe for them to go home, and they did. They returned back to Israel, to the region of Galilee, to the small town of Nazareth. We watched as Jesus continued to grow in his knowledge of God and man. We, we watched as he began his ministry. That when he began his ministry, he went to the Jordan River and he was baptized by John, the son of that fellow named Zachariah who I met in the temple so many years ago. That John was a great prophet. That John had led the people back to God and that had prepared the way for the Messiah who was to come. Then Jesus came to the river with John, he was baptized, and the heavens were opened up, and a voice said, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Immediately after Jesus was baptized, he went into the wilderness, where he fasted and prayed for 40 days. At the end of that, when he was at his weakest, the tempter came. But Jesus was strong enough to resist all of those temptations, but it left him weak. So myself and several other angels went and helped him and attended him following his temptation. After the temptation that Jesus began to gather a group of followers, especially a small group of disciples who went with him everywhere he went, he began to teach the people. He began to heal those who were hurting. He was changing the world. Of course, we know that there are some who do not like change. Some who do not want their world to be changed. And so there were some who soon made a plot to arrest and to crucify Jesus. Some of them were even the religious leaders of the day, if you can believe that. And so they had arranged with one of Jesus' disciples to betray him with a kiss. A kiss, the very sign of friendship, the very sign of intimacy, the very best time he was going to be betrayed On the night he was arrested, Jesus went to a garden to pray. He was in great 
anguish towards God on the other side of heaven. In fact, Jesus was in such anguish that his sweat was like drops of blood as he prayed, Lord, if it is your will, let this cup pass from me. But it was not. You see, Jesus was born to die. He was born to be the perfect sacrifice, and though it cost him everything, he was willing to follow God's will. It broke my heart to watch him, to, to watch his suffering, to, to watch his anguish, and finally I could wait no longer, and I winged my way down from heaven to comfort him and to tell him that God was still with him, to help him in whatever way that I could. Soon the soldiers came. Jesus was arrested. He was tried first of all in a Jewish court and then in a Roman court and sentenced to death. It was hard to watch. It was difficult to watch. It was the very worst day to see Jesus hanging on the cross, and finally he gave up his spirit and he said, I give myself to you. It is finished. I have done what I came to do. When Jesus died, the earth shook, a great storm arose, and many people that were there, they said, surely this must have been the Son of God. It was a dark day. But remember, I told you that God has a habit of making good things out of bad things. That God has a habit of making light out of darkness. That God has a habit of bringing life even out of death. And that's what happened with Jesus. That even though he was dead, the grave could not hold him. And on the third day, he rose again. Several of us were selected to go to the tomb and to tell the good news that Jesus was alive. For we knew that his followers would be going there to anoint his body to, to prepare it for burial. That despite what Jesus had told them about how he must die and be resurrected, that they still didn't understand. And so... God chose me to go to the tomb. And another angel with me, my friend Michael, the archangel, also went with me. And we were in the tomb ready and ready and waiting when Jesus' disciples arrived. This time I didn't have to tell them not to fear, for they knew that God had done something great and miraculous. Instead, I simply said, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. And so Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, is alive. That that little baby born at Christmas so many years ago that I got to be a part to tell the message, to tell the good news about Jesus. He is alive to this day. And it's hard to believe, but an ordinary angel like me, an angel named Gabriel, got to be a small part of the cast of Christmas. Now, I want to share with you that I have taken a few liberties with the scripture along the way. Luke tells us that it was Gabriel who appeared to Zechariah and Mary. In Matthew, the angel who appeared to, a Joseph, to Joseph in a dream all three times is unnamed. First, to tell him to take Mary as his wife, then to flee to Egypt, and then to return back to Israel. That angel is unnamed. I have chosen to personify that angel as Gabriel for my story's sake. So it could have been another angel or even more than one angel to deliver a message. Matthew chapter 4, verse 11 tells us that angels, plural, attended Jesus following his temptation. I have chosen to include Gabriel among that number. Luke twenty-two forty-three 43 tells us that an angel appeared to Jesus while he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Again, the angel is unnamed. I have chosen to portray that angel as Gabriel, but there may have been another. Matthew 28, verses 2 through 7, reports that there is only 
slain angel at the tomb of the resurrected Jesus, while Luke records that there were two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning. Sounds an awful lot like an angel to me. So the exact number of angels at the empty tomb and who they were are not named in the Bible. So I have included Gabriel in it for my story. You may not know that there are only two angels that are named in the Bible. Gabriel and Michael, and and Michael are the only ones named in the Protestant Bible. Though if you grew up Catholic and read the Apocrypha or hidden books, there is a third angel named Raphael that is named in those books. Of course, we also know about a fellow named Lucifer who is a fallen angel and becomes the devil. So who are angels? I know there's a lot of popular misconceptions about angels and some TV shows like Touched by an Angel and others. But angels are simply messengers. They are portrayed as God's helpers and messengers throughout the Bible and especially in the New Testament. And the angels and especially an angel named Gabriel got to be God's helper and messenger on a very important mission to tell the world the news about Jesus, God's Son and Savior, the Messiah. And now that we know the good news, we are also called to be God's helpers and messengers to tell the good news of this holy child and what he has done for humanity through his life, death, and resurrection. So don't wait for an angel. You are an angel. You are the messenger. You are the helpers. We are the ones who get to tell the good news about the life, death, birth, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So don't wait for an angel. You and I, and the angel named Gabriel, we all have a part to play in the task of Christmas by spreading the good news about the birth of Jesus. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for all of those who have shared with us the good news of Jesus throughout the year. We are grateful for your angels, your messengers, who help your helpers to help Jesus and Lord, who are still available to us today. Lord, we pray that you would help us not to wait for an angel. Instead, Lord, to be an angel to be a messenger, to be a helper, to show those around us your love and care. And so, Lord, as we celebrate the Christmas season, we pray that you would help us to remember that not only Gabriel, not only Zachariah, not only the shepherds, but you and I, we are a part of the task of Christmas. And it's all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. As we prepare our hearts and minds to receive the Holy Sacrament, I want to remind you, uh, I would like to invite you to take your hymnal and turn with me to page 12 in your hymnal as we prepare to celebrate a service of word in table number two. While you are turning, I want to remind you that this is the Lord's table. It is not a Methodist table. So if you are here this morning and you are a member of another church, or maybe you simply want to follow Jesus You are welcome at this table, welcome to receive the gift that God has offered to you and to me. Hear now this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart, We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Yes, we have sinned, but hear now the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen.
And now please join with me in the great thanksgiving across the page. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord, to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send empty away. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. And so by the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And now we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, we're going to invite you to come to receive by the center aisle and either kneel or stand at the communion rail, whichever is easier for you. Note that we have a few additional impediments um, with the decorations for Advent. So um, if you could help me by not going all the way to the end, that would be a, a great help to me. So um, after you have received the the bread and the juice, we invite you to remain for a moment in prayer and then to return to your seats by the side aisle. So the Lord's table is open. Would you come as the ushers direct you to um, to receive the good news of Christ? And Alice, I believe I'm going to need some help.
as we come to a close in our service. The altar is open if you would like to come and pray. I'll be glad to pray with you if you'd like to do so. Our task is to continue to be God's messengers. I'd also be glad to talk with you more if you would like to know more about accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior or to be a follower of Jesus by joining our congregation here at Grace United Methodist. Our closing hymn is number 220, Angels from the Realms of Glory. We'll sing 1, 2, and 4. Gary, I know we're running a little bit behind. 1, 2, and 4. Would you stand as we sing together verses 1, 2, and 4, number 220. It has been good to see you in God's house today. We appreciate your presence. Next week, we are going to once again see a character that we introduced you to today as the shepherds. Um, we hear from their perspective, and uh, next week begins. Uh, uh, I've written these last two sermons, but next week and the others are actually written by my father-in-law, and I'm from his book, and so I'm bringing those to life so I'm excited to to do that so I hope you'll join us next week for the night I almost missed and um, so uh, I'm excited about that so um, I invite you to depart with this benediction and closing prayer let us pray together oh Lord we're grateful for the example of Gabriel who was a faithful messenger and helper of yours Lord, we pray that you would help us to be an angel to some other folks, maybe not in the same way as Gabriel, but Lord, to simply be your messenger, your helper, to spread the good news that Jesus Christ is born, that he gave his life for us and lives again so that we might know you. And so, Lord, as we go from this place, we pray that you would help us to be messengers for you, to tell others the good news about Jesus Christ. And it's all these things we ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.